Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm teaching you five forces out of 100. That's right, 100 card forces. I've already taught 25 of them, and if you missed any of them, and if you want to catch up, I'll leave a playlist down below in the description box. Now before we jump into it, you may have noticed there's a new join button down below. This is a monthly plan, uh, it's $5 a month, uh, what you get is all my videos I'm doing on Patreon uh, that are video tutorials on all my tricks in my new book Beyond Fantasy. The only difference between this and my actual Patreon is that the patrons, patrons? They get, after five months of payment, a hardback copy of the book. This join button is just the videos. So if you want to learn some awesome stuff without reading my book, you can watch these videos and help support the channel at the same time. All the money that I make on YouTube and Patreon lets me buy things uh, for the channel like, you know, lights and equipment, uh, microphones, things like that, production quality. And also, you know, decks of cards, books, things like that, uh, you know, resources uh, that helps me teach you guys bigger and better things. So I hope to see you there. Uh, videos are added weekly, just like on my Patreon. And without further ado, as Jorge and Nido would say, let's get right into it. All right, so just like all these Force videos, the Force card in question will be the Ace of Spades, all right? So uh, the first Force that I have for you is called the Cross Count Force by J.K. Hartman, all right? And I've added a little subtlety to it that I think uh, it, it looks a little better, uh, and I'll show you what I mean, all right? So what happens is you can clearly shuffle the deck and you ask a participant to just uh, say stop as you throw cards down on the table uh, like this, all right? Maybe they say stop uh, right here. And that really could have been anywhere. I mean, any one of these cards would have worked, but you could have stopped here or here or anywhere. But after our shuffle deck, you stopped on this card here, which happens to be the Ace of Spades. Now, obviously, you guys are magicians, and you are aware of certain things, you know, certain tricky things that happens with the deck, and you might have noticed that. And uh, But the fact is... A layman is not going to catch on to things like this, all right? So for all intents and purposes, they said stop somewhere and you took the card they stopped on, and that's it. They're not going to be looking for whether or not it came from the top or the bottom because it doesn't matter to them. All that matters is uh, they freely said stop somewhere, which is the most important thing, all right? So this is how the force goes. The force card is on top of the deck, and you, uh, you want to start out with a milk shuffle, all right? So what that is... I've taught it before, but here we go again. You have your fingers on the top card like this, chop off a block of cards from the face, keeping that uh, top card there with the slip, and then just uh, continue on with the shuffle like this. Now you keep the deck face up and sort of necktie toward yourself, all right? So they're not really seeing any of the faces of the cards, all right? So they you want to show them the back of the cards only, all right? So what's gonna happen, you're just gonna sort of spread over some cards like this and turn them face down, and then you, in bunches like this and I have them say stop anytime. Now as soon as they say stop what's going to happen is that you're going to pick up these cards and then at the same time you're going to revolve this packet face down like this in your hand all right so you can either do it like this taking your thumb under and doing that or you can uh, just simply curl it in your fingers it doesn't really matter just as long as you get these cards in your hand face down all right now what's going to happen is you pick up these cards uh, that are on the table and you say well, you could have stopped anywhere now look at, now look at this this looks like this is the middle of the deck because of the situation right here. Although this is not the middle of the deck, this is from the top of the deck, all right? So what you're going to do uh, is say, look, you could have stopped on any one of these cards, and now you're saying this, just casually drop this to the table, the top card there. You could stop on here or here or anywhere, but you stop on one card only, which happens to be the Ace of Spades. So this next force is the Under the Table Force by Ed Marlowe, all right? So what happens is... You explain to the spectator that they are going to cut to some cards, all right? So you demonstrate by doing this. Say, look, do me a favor, just cut off some cards off the top of the deck, all right? And, and in fact, we'll do it under the table. And just so we can see what happens when you come up, uh, do me a favor and just turn them face up like this on top of the deck, all right? So uh, we'll give it one more shuffle just so everything is random. And uh, we go into the table. They grab the deck. And uh, I'll just do it. They cut to some cards. And they come back up, and we'll take a look at the card that was cut to, which is right here. It happens to be the Ace of Spades. Now for this, I like to start with the Force card on the bottom of the deck. That way I can get the deck some shuffles, keep it there with the, the Slip Shuffle, all right? So what's going to happen is you're going to tell the spectator that they're, they're going to cut to some cards 
like this, but just so we can't be influenced and just so we can't see what we're doing beforehand, we'll do under the table. And just so we can know what card you actually cut to, we'll turn them face up like this on top of the deck, all right? So after you explain this and after you demonstrate this, turn these uh, back down, give them another shuffle, this time shuffling that ace of spades all the way to back to the top like this. Now after that demonstration, the ace of spades will be on top of the deck. Now at this point, you just go under the table and say, look, just grab the deck and do that cut. Now what's just gonna happen when you reach under the table is you're going to push that top card, the force card, over as much as you can, you know, as close to the edge as you can, and then, you know, push down with your thumb like this, and then in with your finger, curl your fingers like this, causing that top card to turn over like this. All right, so that's all it is. It's just gonna reverse the top card of the deck like this. Now, uh, since the top card is face up, they don't know that, of course, all right? So what's gonna happen uh, under the table is they cut some cards like this and turn them over. Now check this out. With one cut, uh, that face up ace now is the first face down card in, in the face down half. And that is sort of a variation on the, you know, the cut deeper force, but with this under the table force, you only have to make one cut, and uh, I think it's very nice, and Ed Marlowe is just a genius. And remember, there has to be a reason why you're going under the table, all right? So it's very important to say, hey, look, just so, you know, you're not influenced, and just so, you know, you can't see how many cards you're cutting or, or see the cards you're cutting to, uh, you know, do under the table. That way the cutting is blind, and it will be a surprise. Or whatever you want to say to justify the going under the table, all right? So that's kind of weird because there's no reason to do under the table in the first place, all right? So you always have to find reasons behind uh, strange or weird things in magic, all right? But if you can't find a reason, if you can't come up with a clever you know, justification, as John Bannon always says, no justification is better than a lame justification. All right, so this next force is one I devised after reading uh, an, an old principle by Alex Elmsley. Uh, this principle was just used in a trick, but I've made it into sort of a self or, or a standalone force, all right? So uh, what happens is you have the spectator make all the choices, all right? So they can cut the deck anywhere, and we can spin these around for the Rosetta Shuffle, and they can shuffle these in. Now, you can sort of spread these around and they can uh, go ahead and just take some cards, maybe a five card hand, all right? So, and they don't have to come from the top either. They can come from anywhere in this mess of cards. So that's one, two, three, four, and five cards, all right? So we can put these aside. Now the deck was shuffled, but uh, they weren't cut ever. So we'll just cut this little deck of cards, this five card deck, and uh, they can make all the choices. They can either cut one, two, three, or four cards, Let's say they cut uh, two cards, all right? So we just take two cards, cut them to the top, put that card there, and they could have cut to this card, that card, they could have cut it, cut to any one of those. From a shuffle deck, they just shuffled, but the card they got is the Ace of Spades. All right, so the fourth card is on top of the deck, all right? So you can start by shuffling the deck like this in your hands, and you can either, you know, give the deck a table shuffle like this, and then uh, make sure the top card is on top and do that Juan Tamariz thing and have them, you know, push the cards in. Or you can do the Rosetta Shuffle, which I just love, which is taking half the deck, doing the spin, and making sure that top card stays on the top after the push-in. They do that, which feels very nice and very free and uh, very fair. Right, so the top card is still the Ace of Spades no matter what shuffle you do. But it's always important to have them do the mixing procedure, all right? So next you, s you spread this, you know, jumbled mess of cards around and you gesture towards the top of the deck and say, look, what I'm gonna do is take some cards uh, from the deck here. So gesture towards the top. So they start to take cards from there. And after they take that first card, say, look, you don't have to take the top cards. I mean, you shuffle the whole deck so they can come from anywhere, all right? So they take one, two, uh, three, four, and five cards. All that's important is that, it, is that they take the top card, the ace of uh, spades, okay? So after they do that, they take the five cards and put the deck away. Now, as you're talking and gesturing, say, look, I mean, you shuffled the deck. You could have cut anywhere or cut anywhere. I mean, these cards are completely random. And as you're doing this, since you know the, the bottom card is the ace of spades here, as you're mixing these around, you just slip that second from the bottom, all right? So that forest card has to be second from the bottom of this packet. 
Now at this point, you ask them, you know, you know, we shuffled the deck, but we never cut the cards. Let's just uh, let's just cut this little deck of five cards, all right? So you ask them, how many cards we should cut? Should we cut one, two, three, or four cards? And you can't cut five because that be you can't cut five cards because it is five cards. All right, so here's what happens: if uh, if they say one card, you take the first card, you take one card off the bottom and cut it to the top, and that'll make the bottom card the card they cut to. If they say two cards, same thing, take two cards from the bottom, cut them to the top, and the top card is the card they cut to. If they say three cards, it's the same thing as cutting two to the top, however in this case, you're cutting three to the bottom, alright? So if it's, they say cut three cards, take three cards off the top, cut them to the bottom, and that's the fourth card on top. If they say four cards, say perfect, we'll cut four cards to the bottom of the deck, and that is a card you cut to on the bottom. So it might seem like a lot to remember, but it's really not. Just remember that two and three are the same, and one and four are the same. What I mean by that is two and three are the same, so if they say two, cut to the top. If they say three, cut through the bottom. So it's the same action, no matter what they say, all right? So it's the same action for two and three, boom, or boom, all right? So, and again, one and four are the same, so if they say one, boom if they say four boom so again it's the same sort of uh, action but it's it's the way you uh this is the way you say it so this next one is really interesting and it uses uh bruce servant's the moth switch as a force which i just added uh, his move to a force and i think it's pretty cool all right so what happens is you start to them over cards like this and you ask them to say stop any time, all right? So once they do, you really do stop there. And I uh, show them, look, you could have stopped on, you know, the eight of clubs, you could have stopped on the seven of hearts, but you stopped on the ace of spades. All right, so force card on top of the deck. What's gonna happen is you're gonna start thumbing over cards like this, thus reversing the order. So the first card that goes into your hand is the force card, all right? So you keep doing this, and that stays there the whole time on your hand, right? The bottom card there. So you keep doing this, they say stop any time. Once they do, you just uh, change grips. Like, that's the card you stopped on. You could have stopped on this one. Now, as you're saying this, you just sort of pin that down to the deck there and readjust into Biddle Grip. Alright, so you just pick that packet up that you just counted into Biddle Grip. Now you thumb over the stopped on card, which is really the stopped on card, but you're going to switch it here in a minute, and here's how. So you pick it up under the packet in Biddle Grip like this, so it's, you know, side jog like that, and say, look, you could, you could have stopped on the Eight of Clubs, so you just turn it over with the Eight of this card here to help flip it over, so you could have stopped on the Eight of Clubs. Now here comes the switch. As you go to show uh, the card, the other card they could have stopped on, you just pin that down to the deck like this as your fingers move that bottom card over, right? So it's like this in slow motion, so that gets pinned there, and your fingers just take that ace of spades like this, so that becomes a situation uh, now, so, all right? So again, you're like this, the eight of clubs, and then as you go to turn your hand palm up, you pin that there with your thumb, dragging over that ace of spades like this and you could have stopped on the king of hearts so immediately after the switch that's when you turn your hand palm up to show them that card and as you're showing them that card you just casually drop that on the table like that so all those things combined us using all those movements without hesitating or pausing really creates a strong illusion all right so it's almost invisible all right so again the first card on top uh, say stop any time blah 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 oh stop here all right so again you just readjust pin that on the deck, take it in middle grip, and then over the supposed uh, stopped on card and take it like this. That's really a different card, it's the nine of clubs, all right? So you say, look, you could have stopped on the king of hearts, right? Do the switch like this as you turn that hand up immediately to show the other card, the seven of hearts, thumb that card down. But the card you stopped on is the ace of spades. An important thing to note, as you're doing this, you wanna turn your body uh, you're right-handed, so you'll turn to the right. So you want to make it to where your deck holding hand is uh, outward facing them, all right? So uh, what you're gonna do is, again, do that. And look how invisible this becomes. This hand shades everything, all right? So this is the move, they can't see anything at all. And then everything looks normal, all right? So they thumb that card over, and of course it's the ace. All right, so this next one is just a classic in Magic, and it goes way all the way back to the classic books, and I mean, it's hard to track who actually came up with this, but it's the classic uh, Redeal Force. 
And I just independently came up with some subtleties uh, to make it a little bit more interesting and uh, not so obvious. All right, so uh, you know, I'm not saying that I invented this. I'm just showing you a, a cool way to do the re the redeal for us. All right, so we can give the deck a quick mix, and uh, you have your participant uh, cut off some cards, however many they want. Maybe have the deck, it's, but uh, it's up to them. All right, so they do that. Now you ask them to start dealing cards face down onto a pile and stop whenever they think there might be enough cards. All right, so maybe they say stop right here, and uh, just in case, uh, give the deck a little mix and deal a few more just in case there's not enough. All right, so they do that and they put the deck aside uh, when they're done doing that. All right, so now. You say, look, we shuffled the deck, but we didn't really cut the card. So just to make sure everything is, you know, fair and above board, do me a favor, deal a card right there and right there, and uh, stop whenever the cards are gone. All right. So they do that, and uh, now look, now we need to cut the cut these cards. So just pick up any pile you want, maybe the, that one right there, and pop it onto those. So after all that shuffling, after all that mixing and dealing, after all that randomness that it, you made every decision, the card you cut to is the Ace of Spades. All right, so the first uh, kind of cool subtlety that I've added to this is the is the initial cutting from the beginning, all right? So obviously the card, the force card is on top of the deck. Now what's gonna happen is you're going to ask them, well, first of all, you can get the deck and mix, or you can do the Rosetta Shuffle, like I taught previously, or you can just do it yourself, it doesn't really matter. And uh, you ask them to cut off some cards from the top of the deck. It, it can be half or however many you want, it, it's up to you. All right, so they do that. And you ask them to start dealing cards face down onto the table, so they, so they do that. And you ask them to stop uh, whenever they think there might be enough cards, so they, so they stop right there. And then they can mix these up. So you go get those a shuffle and deal a few more just in case there's not enough, all right? So, and I like adding things like that. I like, you know, giving them all the freedom and start, you know, stop anywhere when you think there's enough, shuffle the deck, deal a few more just in case there's not enough. Like it might depend on that, you know, but it, it, it won't. All right, so after them doing that, ask them to put the rest on top. Now, the reason why I do the cut is because when everything is all said and done, they remember cutting anywhere in the deck and to them, they'll, you know, they'll look back at it. Wait, I, I could have cut the cards anywhere. So it, it sort of feels like, and you know, it sort of seems like uh, the, you know, these cards on the table could have came from anywhere in the deck from, from when they cut, right? At least that's the way it feels to me, and uh, you can just remind them of that, and, and you can reconstruct it however you want to, which is the beauty of magic, because it's all about lying. <laughs> now, once these cards are on the table, obviously the bottom card will be the Ace of Spades, all right? So what's going to happen now is, is you say, look, the cards were shuffled, but we didn't cut the cards, so just so we can make sure everything is fair and above board, why don't you deal a card there, and deal a card there, and then keep doing that until all the cards are are gone all right so they so they do this and all you're doing here is keeping track of where that last card goes which is the ace of spades so you just keep track of which pile that uh last card goes on top so here's a here's something i want to point out to you sometimes in magic your instructions can be a little bit confusing all right so i mean and you know deal the you know, deal this in two piles, and we know exactly what that means, but not everybody, especially layman, knows what that means, all right? So if you say, look, now deal, deal in the two piles, they'll be like, what What do you mean? I don't know what to do, right? So you want to really make your instructions as clear as possible and easy to understand, all right? So the best way to do that in this case, say, look, deal a card face on right there and right there, and keep doing that back and forth until there's no cards left. This way, they know exactly what to do and there's no pressure on them. All right, so they do that until all the cards are gone, remembering which uh, pile the last card goes on top of, all right? So at this point, say, look, now we, now we need to cut these, all right? So you can pick up any pile you want, all right? So it doesn't matter which pile they pick up because it's going to work either way. If they pick up the pile with the forest card, say, look, perfect, uh, you know, smack them onto those, boom, and then the top card will be the card they apparently cut to. So if they pick the other pile, you say, look, you, I mean, first of all, you need to ask them to pick one pile up, all right? So if they pick up this one, slap them on there, that's the force card, all right? So if they pick up this one, say, perfect, now pick up that one and slap them onto there. So either way, the top card is going to be the force card, all right? So again, uh, you have your force card here that you remember from the deal. They pick up this pile, the same one of that. If they pick up this pile, ask them to put it in their hand, pick up that pile and slam it onto there to make the cut. And you know, with all of these principles, it's always a good idea to give them as many free choices as possible that doesn't, you know, 
affect the outcome of the effect, all right? So the top card, the ace of spades, you know, deals as many cards as you want. You know, remember they cut anywhere. And then all these things, you know, pick up any pile. All these, all these things don't affect the outcome. So as many free choices that you can cram in there uh, doesn't really make a difference because they'll look back on it. Wait, I cut anywhere. I picked up any pile. I stopped dealing anywhere. And then they'll, it'll be impossible for them to reconstruct it. Anyway, guys, those are the five forces I have for you today. Uh, let me know in the comments which one you like the best and which one you think you'll use the most.